Okay, so without further ado, it is my great honor to introduce the 2018 artist in residence, Leanne, ha Leanne Howe, who is the author of novels, plays, poetry, screenplays, and scholarship that deal with Native experiences. A citizen of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma, some of her awards include the Western Liter Literature Association's 2015 Distinguished Achievement Award for her body of work, the inaugural 2014 MLA Prize for Studies in Native American Literatures, a 2012 United States Artist Ford Fellowship, a 2010 Fulbright Scholarship to Jordan, and an American Book Award in 2002 for her first novel, Shell Shaker. Howe's current projects include a new book forthcoming in February 2019 from Coffeehouse Press. Savage Conversations is set in 1875 and is the story of Mary Todd Lincoln and a savage Indian spirit she invented who tortures her nightly. The book is based, <laughs> the book is based on Mary's letters and reports from her doctors. Scholar Philip J. Deloria writes, quote, the book explodes with the stench and guilt and insanity that undergirds the American story. Leanne is producing a new documentary, Searching for Sequoia, with Ojibwe filmmaker James M. Fortier. The film is set in the US and Mexico and will air in 2019. She's the Edison Distinguished Professor of American Literature in English at the University of Georgia. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Leanne Howe. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank American Studies again for inviting me, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful time to be with everyone and see so many friends and meet some new friends. So I am going to read from the new work. It's Savage Conversations, and most everything that, that is, in the, is in the book I took right from either Mary Todd Lincoln's letters or, um, or the doctor's reports. So I'll, and it's written in a poetic frame. Uh, the uh, UGA, my home institution in 2019 in the fall, is staging this as a, as a play. So I'm really happy about that. And um, so I'm just gonna briefly read from the, from, from the book. So President Abraham Lincoln gave the order to execute 38 Dakota Indians in Mankato, Minnesota for their actions in the Dakota War against white settlers who had stolen their lands, then their rations, and raped their women. At 10 a.m. on December 26, 1862, the synchronized hanging of 38 Dakotas was and continues to be the largest mass execution in United States history. 4,000 settlers attended the execution. After the mass burial, the bodies of American Indians were dug up by a local doctor and used as medical cadavers. Fast forward 11 years to November 1873, Dr. Willis Danford of Illinois treats Mary Todd Lincoln for nervous derangement and fever in the head. He knows peculiar symptoms. Mrs. Lincoln tells him that someone is removing wires from her eyes, especially the left one, and cutting the bones from her cheeks she attributes the fiendish work inside her head to an Indian spirit. Nightly, she claims, he lifts her scalp and replaces it by dawn. The Indian, she says, slits my eyelids open, sews them up with wires, and then removes them by dawn's first light. And I believed her. So the characters in the book, there are only three, Mary Todd Lincoln, Savage Indian, one of the 38 uh, Dakota men hanged the day after Christmas, and the rope. Um, 
The rope is both a man and an image of a hangman's noose used in the largest ma mass execution. The rope eavesdrops on their conversation and he sometimes twirls around the room just like a dancer. So they speak in dreams. Apocrypha. Bellevue Place Sanitarium, June 1875, Batavia, Illinois, Mary Todd Lincoln. Before you can think, you forget and then remember a dress of blood, gloves I refuse to wash ever. What is it to a wild Indian? The president is shot, fool. I was his all in all, his Molly, his child wife and mother, his puss, savage Indian, thoughtfully. Well, he, he called me puss too. Catafalk, June 1875, Bellevue Place Sanitarium, midnight. Mary's bedroom. The underarms of her nightdress are badly soiled. Her small feet are swollen. The paper uh, skin is thin. She speaks to Mr. Lincoln as if he's in her room. Savage Indian has a small box on his lap filled with her jewelry. He fingers each piece and finally fastens a pearl necklace around his neck. Mary Todd Lincoln. Nightly, I examine our ruined heads in my hand mirror, yours and mine. Our eyes dangle like dull grapes on a broken vine. Is it the candlelight? Savage Indian watches her with menacing eyes but does not move. Mary Todd Lincoln. I touch the blemish on your face, finger your blood-stained shirt. A drop of spittle has escaped your tight lips, your bare feet clammy as fish, all there and here. I kiss the mirror, beg you to wake, fight to catch your attention through some mad theatrical gesture. Remember? My bed, always a catafalk to you. Oh, let fly my flesh, hair, and eyelash. Pay the night jar who regularly serenades and, like us, steals the milk of goats. Here at last, I'll tell it all. I did wish you dead, sir, 8,039 times for all the days you ran sideways from our home whistling a night jar's tune. Pay them all now, sir, before dawn's light. Savage Indian reads aloud the inscription of her wedding ring. Love is eternal. Catafalque II, Bellevue Place Sanitarium, June 1875. Mary Todd Lincoln and Savage Indian pace around the room like amateur boxers. Mary Todd Lincoln. Arriving nightly without invitation, you make my room a ceremony as night jars sing, wing clap, chur their song, inhibited by, by God's will at dawn, like we are. When shall I tell them the truth? Where shall I keep the truth? Under my frayed petticoat? It will not flower now. She fingers a small picture of Abraham Lincoln on her bureau. There is no need to wait for tea, I confess. Though you coveted another, I long for the pleasure of your coarse skin, money to spend, kit gloves, chiffon and satin ball gowns with lavish trains, properly hemmed, and doomed children. Tonight, let us hoist the catafalque over a new grave, hold my hands above the dank earth, as the night jars serenade. 
Oh, what a great heart smasher you are, Mr. Lincoln. Adieu, my confessor, my all in all, lover, protector, ghost husband. Turning to savage Indian and wishing for nothing, not even breath. Take the flint knife, cut me, I dare you. The rope sees Savage Indian Feeds Gar Woman, June 9th, 1875. Time. 3 a.m., a slight breeze blows, the gauzy curtains open, midnight floods the room. Mary Todd Lincoln, cleave unto me. Seduce, fetter, handcuff, wheel clamp the irons, savage, I cease all protestations. The savage Indian checks her scalp for knits, wipes excess bear grease from his hands on her nightdress, and fills her gaping mouth with fescue and sod. How does it taste, Gar Woman? You said... If they are hungry, let them eat grass or their own dung. Trader Andrew Merrick's words, Lower Sioux Agency, August 15, 1862, but your sentiments spoken more than once. Mary Todd Lincoln swallows. June 9, 1875, I am in possession only of my name, Mary Todd Lincoln, bewildered with a joy so noble, I too could expire. Savage Indian places her wedding ring on his little finger. Who says Abe is dead? The rope seethes. Out of Fort Snelling's coffin, I swing like a fool on holiday, backward, forward, and around, and around, and around. The rope speaks. Bellevue Place Sanatorium. Sanitarium. The rope. I done it. Done them all. I come when I'm called, like a dog, a horse, a lover. And this is how I make brothers and sisters. The rope begins to fashion a second noose with his hands. Start with a piece of string or rope, three feet in length. Bring one end of the loop down parallel to the original rope and fold it into thirds. It should form a wide sideways S. The lead, the left side, should be left longer so you have some rope at the end for tying to something. With the bottom of the original C, wrap the end of the rope around and around and around. The loop from the bottom end, bring your hand upward. With the rope that has been wound around the sea, poke the end of the rope through the top of the left loop by the S. Once the loop is fully tightened, your task is complete. The rope laughs, holds up the noose for inspection, hangs it from a rafter in Mary Todd Lincoln's bedroom. A good, a good noose? should have one giant loop at one end and a piece of rope at the other. I'm going to close with um, the Savage Indian Laments. July 4th, 1875, Bellevue Place Sanatorium. Savage Indian walks amid all the clutter in Mary Todd Lincoln's sitting room. She paces, savage Indian. I know isolation, silence, 
the slow descent downward, lost somewhere in midair. Gar woman, I have crippling doubts, but I surrender nothing, not even in death. He looks around at their surroundings. I no longer have to worry. That doesn't mean I am not suspicious of the living. They enter my dreams unintended. The land, they are pulling down the last of our dead. Bodies of men hanged by a rope of lies. When I was a human being, I would sing the air thick with Dakota songs. December 26, 1862. In 150 years, the citizens of Mankato will shiver, asking why their ancestors hang 38 Dakota Indians over a handful of hen's eggs. When I look at your world, I weep, because in the end, even your life is a captivity account. Maybe we are all captives of one sort of, or the other. He stops and drinks water from one of her china cups. For the 38 lives abandoned. In that moment in Mankato, I was misplaced. Maybe the night jars carried my spirit to safety, back to the beginning, even before Mother Earth existed. You're probably wondering when, what millennia. Because in your eyes, every hour is measured to die alone while dying with 37 others. And this is where I tell you about my friends dying, a death song. He sang it. Then we sang together. On the platform in Mankato, we tried to grasp hands, shout, grasp hands, shouting to the winds. Minnesota, Makochi, land where the waters reflect the skies, the land where we die. Words caught in our throats, choked by a muscular rope. Savage Indian raises the teacup again to salute the rope. Rope, now he held fast. The rope takes a bow. 1862, almost like a birthday, tiny needles so shut the Muslim cloth around our faces, buried in a mass grave, only to be dug up, stolen by physicians to be used as medical cadavers, later stored in cast iron pots. Still, our bodies cramped and squirmed in the wind. Our spirits scattered. All of us, Gar woman, still hanged. And you dressed in a stinking night, sh night shift, the one you refused to remove all these months can never cover the past. The soldiers are pulling on their boots. They are not the ones they think they are. When I am myself as I am tonight, every word is a weapon. When I am myself as I am tonight, why can't I forget what happened and take you amid the dried up tingling in my head, the dried up prickle between my legs, the ravaged filaments of desire? Oh, I lied to the settlers. I lied to preachers. But Gar Woman... You are not the one you claim to be. You bring a child into the world and intensely regret it. Despite your theatrical tears for pity when another son dies, you believe you know what must be done with your bruise and tainted teeths. But I have seen the ghost of Abraham, Eddie, Willie, even Tad, shrink when you enter a room, shadows escaping your burning sun. What happens next, Gar Woman? You've swallowed all of your eggs. Savage Indian grabs Mary Todd Lincoln by her shoulders and pulls her to him. 
because the wind refuses your touch, because the insects abandon the ground where you sleep, because your prayers wilt the prairie grasses, because at dawn every breath is a trial, because with your eyes sewn open you still see nothing, because everything you touch leaves a bruise. The muskets are being reloaded. The car beams are being reloaded. The large bore rifles are being reloaded. The Gatlin guns are being reloaded. Emancipate me. Fire! The rope seethes. And now a bloody red tongue unspools. Thank you.